One of the most influential genres in movie history has to be the samurai genre, also known as chambara. This genre is highly responsible for many favorite movements in world cinema. Without it, Star Wars, spaghetti westerns, and films by Quentin Tarantino would either be vastly different or just cease to exist entirely. The problem is just getting newcomers to watch these films. I tend to use my wife as the model for the average moviegoer. She'll say stuff like, this is boring, why is it black and white, and I can't look at my phone if there's subtitles. So with that in mind, I'm gonna compile a list of films that will create a bridge for the average moviegoer. And this is gonna make it easier for the average moviegoer to just ease into this amazing genre. And then hopefully from there, they might get into more of the advanced samurai films that we hold in high regard. And while I do believe that all Akira Kurosawa samurai films should be viewed at some point, rather than just listing all of them, I'm gonna have some other films that I think should be viewed first, and then I'm gonna list the ones that I think are easiest. So here's my beginner's guide to samurai films. Enjoy. So, first on the list I have The Last Samurai. Not only is this the movie that got me into the samurai genre, but it's also the perfect starting point for everyone. For one, the movie doesn't have many subtitles. Most of the characters speak English, even some of the Japanese ones. It also has two very big stars. One thing I notice with most moviegoers is that they won't watch a film if there's not an actor or two that they don't know. It's kind of like going to a party and not knowing anyone. So at least with this, everyone at least knows Tom Cruise. Also, the central theme of the story deals with a foreigner being introduced into a new culture and new country that he's unfamiliar with. It's exactly what the audience is going to be going through if they start here. Also, it's a film that's pretty easy to find anywhere. Currently, it's on Netflix, so easy access. Check it out. The final installment in the live-action Moroni Kenshin series is surprisingly the best place to start. For one, you don't have to see the other Moroni Kenshin films before watching this one. Like its name, it shows the beginning to the series and the beginning to the main character. This is also one of the few anime manga adaptations that is successful as both a film and a faithful retelling of its source material. It's easy to follow, it's modern, has awesome fights, the cinematography is beautiful, there's also a decent dub if you don't like subtitles, and currently it's on Netflix, so once again, easy access. I know this is supposed to be about films, but it's a beginner's guide, so I think one of the biggest tributes to classic samurai film in recent years has to be the game Ghost of Tsushima. This was a game that I feel sparked a lot of interest in the genre, and I'm pretty sure a bunch of people who played this game became more interested in samurai films. The game may not be the most historical depiction. People often point out how samurai didn't always follow the code of honor that the game kind of says they did. They didn't even really carry the distinctive katana, especially during the time period in which it's supposed to take place. It does retain some historical details, but it's not intended to be a History Channel style recreation. And Sucker Punch has acknowledged this. Instead, Ghost of Tsushima is a translation of a translation. It's inspired by the Chambara genre of Japanese films, all of which were focused on the samurai of old. It's kind of similar with westerns and how they romanticize the cowboy in the United States. Samurai cinema did the same thing for the ancient warriors. The genre has made samurai into larger-than-life figures, softening some edges while sharpening others. And Ghost of Tsushima carries forward those ideals. As I played through this game, I caught many hints and references to certain films, and I love that. If you're into gaming, definitely don't miss Ghost of Tsushima.
Sword of the Stranger is a great film for fans of anime and animation. This is what you use to get anime fans into samurai movies. This film really wasn't about breaking new grounds with narratives or storytelling, but instead it's more about creating a visual spectacle that just gave a lot of freedom to the animators. It allowed them to show just what they were capable of and just create this solid production at the same time. Add in some excellent characters, a great soundtrack, and just an unforgettable final battle. It's one of the best. And you got yourself a solid samurai film. Now, Ghost Dog was a film that took me forever to finally watch. Mainly because I thought it was a joke. I mean, Forrest Whitaker pretending to be a samurai just seemed kind of weird. But after I finally watched it, I could definitely see why it's on so many top 10 lists, because this movie is awesome. Despite the lack of sword fights in feudal Japanese setting, Ghost Dog The Way of the Samurai is a pure samurai film at heart. The main character in this is just as much of a wandering ronin as any other. He's caught between his loyalties and his own moral code. The film also kind of represents the impact that the genre has made with the hip-hop culture. It has a pretty killer soundtrack and a welcome cameo by the Wu-Tang Clan's RZA. Whenever picturing Kill Bill and katana battles that end in geysers of blood, that was all inspired by Shogun Assassin. The Mandalorian show also was inspired by Shogun Assassin. If you think about it, it's a pretty similar concept. But Shogun Assassin is a compilation of the first two films in the Lone Wolf and Cub series. But I do recommend Shogun Assassin instead, just because I think it's better for newcomers. For one, it's dubbed in English, and I do actually like the dub a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. You may also recognize some of the iconic lines from some Wu-Tang Clan songs. Choose the ball, and you join your mother in death. But also because it's two movies in one, it ends up working out better because it gives it a really nice pace. You're being treated to the best scenes in the first two movies. Shogun Assassin introduced American audiences to the over-the-top aesthetic of 70s samurai films, especially with its stylized editing and gory fight sequences. The final showdown in the desert, for instance, consists of assassins popping out of the sands, wolverine-style claws, and fountains of blood all set to an 80s synth soundtrack. It's perfect, and if that doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. And if you do like this film, then be sure to check out the rest of the Lone Wolf and Cub series. It's all excellent. The Shogun miniseries may not be the best of the samurai shows or films, but it is very good and I think it's great for newcomers. Just like with The Last Samurai, it's about a foreigner entering Japan for the first time and just being blown away by its culture. The novel is also really great, I think it's even better. It's long, but after about 100 pages, I couldn't put it down. The show has both English and Japanese, so it's not so bad if you're still getting used to subtitles. I found the narrator also to do a really good job at explaining things, and it helped the story move along. 13 Assassins is not only a great introduction for newcomers to Samurai, but it's also a great introduction to the director of Takashi Miike. It's his most accessible film. Miike is a director who has his own style. It's very weird. You kind of have to see it to know what it is. But this film is fast paced, it's easy to follow, and the fight scenes are awesome. It all ends up coming together for a 45 minute insane final fight. And it just maintains this chaotic energy until the credits roll. 13 Assassins not only manages to upstage the original in my opinion, but it also just does a really great job at showcasing what modern filmmaking can do with the samurai genre. 
So this is the B. Takeshi reboot of the long-running Zatoichi film series. There's about 26 movies. It's insane. Zatoichi in this is once again a blind swordsman and he comes across a town that's desperate for protection from the gang of the Yakuza. And despite its typical story setup, Zatoichi 2003 is a fun throwback to the gritty aesthetic of 70s samurai films. Beloved Japanese superstar Takeshi Katano directs and stars in the film. Takeshi Katano really is great as Ichi in this. I probably like Shintaro Katsu's Ichi more, but, but still, he just does a really great job. He has more of a stoic Ichi, where Shintaro Katsu's is more funny. But I think the modern feel in this film makes it more approachable for newcomers to the series. But if you do like the concept, be sure not to miss the originals. Just because I think they're all excellent films and Shintaro Katsu is just a legend. When you think about it, The Hidden Fortress has all the qualities of a great summer blockbuster. It has a treasure, a princess, a brave warrior, and an escort mission. It's a perfect adventure film and its pace still holds up today. I feel like it's the perfect film to introduce newcomers to not only Akira Kurosawa, but also just to teach people that old movies can be just as exciting as new ones. Given also that George Lucas has cited the film as his primary inspiration for Star Wars, its impact as a classic more than speaks for itself. Yojimbo is a great film to watch just to see how many times Hollywood has ripped it off. The story about the lone traveler that's on no one's side but helps those in need and is highly skilled and can kill anyone in the blink of an eye, that all came from Yojimbo. Besides it being something very familiar, it's still an excellent film that you can still enjoy. Toshiro Mifune is just absolutely perfect as his character and just the sandy Japanese desert town setting is just the perfect mood and setup. And it's also got a decently fast pace to it. Don't miss it. Roshaman is not only a fantastic entryway into the world of Japanese film, but it's also just a superb introduction to classic cinema in general. I can pretty much guarantee you that you'll be amazed by how well such an old film is able to entertain you, more than 60 years after its release. The story itself is gripping, the comedy is timeless, the cinematography is out of this world, and the acting is just above and beyond most filmmaking of its time. It might very well be the best Japanese film for newcomers, but for sure it's the most influential film on this list. So, I used to view Ron as the movie that was more for the advanced viewer. I just figured this because it's based on Shakespeare, there's a lot of dialogue. Sometimes there's not so much action. But actually recently when I got the new 4K, I showed it to my wife and she absolutely loved it. Really surprised me. From the incredible visuals to the tragic Shakespearean storyline of King Lear, this will show newcomers just how beautiful a samurai film could be. It's bright colors, interesting environments, there's always something going on. If the story doesn't hook them, then the colors and incredible cinematography no doubt will. I actually made a video calling this the most beautiful film ever made, and actually it's the video with the most views. So people are interested in this. It's not only one of the best Akira Kurosawa films, but it's one of the best movies in general. So, Seventh Samurai was actually the first old school samurai film I ever watched. I always heard about it, but at the time I was kind of ignorant of old movies. I had this weird thing in my head where movies that were old weren't good. But this film completely blew me away and I was 
pretty young too when I watched it. And it just changed my entire outlook on film. This film converted me into the classic samurai genre. In the very first video that I ever posted, I called this the best movie ever made, and I still feel that way. Seven Samurai is life changing, and it's one of a kind. As for the movie itself, I find it to be very fast paced, enough even for modern audiences. The overall impact should definitely make anyone a fan of this genre. So I ended up putting Hurakiri last. It's not as easily accessible to newcomers as Seven Samurai is. I feel like you have to have some films under your belt before you get the honor of enjoying this one, especially to its fullest. This is the best achievement in samurai films not directed by Kurosawa. Maybe it's the best samurai movie ever made. Maybe the best Japanese movie. Maybe the best movie. It is a gripping examination of honor, duty, and societal constructs. The film kind of plays like a courtroom drama. The action only leaves a courtroom in flashbacks. Tatsuya Nakadai in this is just captivating. And he just plays this mental game of chess. And it just unfolds between him and the feudal lord. It's incredibly structured all the way to its devastating finale. This is for sure to interest even the most casual viewer of samurai films. I think by following this guide and just watching these films, I feel like any fan of film will understand and just hopefully become a fan of the most excellent genre ever. If there's any other you'd like me to add, feel free to mention that in the comments. I was happy to read all of your recommendations, I appreciate that. Anyway, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to help the channel out, you can check out my Patreon. You'll get early access to all of my videos, and you also get to choose the next video. You also get access to my Discord where we get to discuss all topics that we love. Anyway, thanks for watching.